most unusual day. From the west, a cold front, riding in high on the jet stream. From the Gulf of Mexico, a low mass of moist, warm, unstable air heading northward. And when they collided, it became the day of the killer tornadoes. From early morning, the weather service warnings were out. From the Gulf to the Canadian border. Tornado watch for this area has now been changed to tornado warning. At 9.30 in the morning, the first tornado touches down in an open field in Indiana. By early afternoon, as the turbulence grows, the watches and warnings are coming thick and fast. Tornadoes are hitting Tennessee, Georgia, Ohio, two in Illinois, two more in Indiana. Another sighted near Hardinsburg, Kentucky, heading toward Brandenburg, a sleepy little river town 25 miles southwest of Louisville. At the radio station, just west of town, announcer Bill Byrne receives a telephone call telling of its coming. The only warning, a last second shout, and in 30 seconds, 31 people will die. In Louisville, upriver, an alarm sounds in the newsroom at WHAS, the local emergency broadcast station. Jeff, we got a tornado warning. Give me the emergency action curtain. A tornado warning has been issued for part of Kentuckiana. WHAS now transmits the tone to activate special receivers. The severe thunderstorm warning has been changed to a tornado warning for Metro Louisville, Jefferson County, including Meade... In Hart the sky above, County. Dick Gilbert, the station's airborne traffic reporter, is already keeping watch. Hey, Dick, uh, what can you see at this point? Well, we do have a pretty uh, wild and rugged uh, weather picture on our hands here, so uh, be prepared for it as you're driving. Let's see here. I don't actually physically see the, uh, any tornado activity at the moment, but it does look highly suspicious down there in the southwest. Fire Department. This is Dave Reeves at the weather station. We have a tornado reported on the ground in the Brandenburg vicinity. And it's headed toward Louisville. So we think the siren should be activated at the present time. Okay, hit the yellow alert. Fire Department, yes, it's tornado warning. Attorney Toby, you're on list for further instructions. Well, it's a spectacular sight, uh, the low clouds, very black low clouds. Uh, let's see, at the moment they're just about over Bowman Field, out, and it is swirling around, and uh, it looks like uh, smoke underneath it. There is no real tight uh, definitive tornado as such. It's still turning in a lot. Yes, there's one now. Okay, John Burke is on the phone at this time. John, I understand that you've got the tornado sighted. But here comes the wind. We're hitting winds up the good gracious sakes alive. How high is the wind speed at this time? There's 50 right there. My golly, it's, it's the whole thing's going here. Yeah, I'm going, going. Okay. huge funnel touches down at the state fairgrounds south of the city, then heads direct for downtown. WHAS TV, head cameraman Bert Broman grabs his camera and runs for the roof. The storm roars through just east of the central business district of Louisville then swings northeast and begins smashing the suburbs. 90 miles northeast at the Cincinnati airport. This is Cincinnati weather. Well, Hamilton County Radio. Go ahead with your traffic. The Versailles, Indiana says he's, uh, he's just been picking up uh, numerous reports. The funnel's dipping up and down. Attention all cars and departments and all county broadcasts. Macaron, Cincinnati, Hamilton County Civil Defense. The National Warning System alerts Leora Macaron, the county civil defense director. Civil Defense to Weather Service, what is the location of the tornado? 13 miles southwest of Greater Cincinnati Airport, moving toward the northeast, 50 miles per hour. Okay, I'm going to sound the sirens.
This is not a test. This is an For the first time in 17 years, the civil defense sirens are sounding in earnest. At WCKY, the local emergency broadcast station. The National Weather Service says it has sighted a tornado near the greater Cincinnati airport. Here is the National Weather Service with the latest report. It is a foul cloud. It looks to be about 200 feet off the ground. No, now it is touching the ground. What is it doing now? Heading directly toward Hamilton County. This family of tornadoes that's uh, just southwest of the city now is going to go up the west side of the city and through the northwest side of the city. Quickly, the emergency operating center is manned by civil defense and members of the Hamilton County Disaster Council, representing police, fire, sheriff's office, rescue, the Red Cross, the Greater Cincinnati Hospital Association, and the Academy of Medicine. Attention all cars, the apartment is station on emergency traffic only. You know, with emergency, go ahead. We have spotted a tornado in Green Township. It is really big. A huge funnel rips across the Ohio River, passes just west of Cincinnati, roars on through Hamilton County. Straight towards Bridgetown Road. You can see debris and everything flying to the area. 913, 914. We have a touchdown, 5800 West Fork. Okay. Extensive damage. People screaming for help. H.I.O. Weatherman Gil Whitney is watching his radar. Well, I think it is. We better do something about this camera. Cameras in the studio. Cameras in the studio. Prepare for weather set. Prepare weather set. Here's a weather bulletin from W.H.I.O.'s instant weather radar station. Instant weather radar now shows a tornado developing in northeastern Warren County. Let's take a look at it. At 50 miles, the tornado is indicated by that strong echo to the southeast corner of the center of the screen. That familiar six hook now developing off the bottom of that tornado, uh, that uh, thunderstorm rather. The tract apparently is taking it from northeastern Warren County into southeastern Montgomery County into central Greene County. 
at Centerville Police Station, 10 miles south of Dayton. Units, there's been a funnel cloud sighted in the south part of the township. Start running your sirens and your loudspeakers. Attention all cars, departments, agencies, Montgomery County. A funnel cloud has been spotted in Washington Township, Montgomery County. At Miami Valley Disaster Services in Dayton, the director, Dick Burroughs, picks up the message. Centerville Police Department, this is Lank. Uh, this is Burroughs. Do you have a funnel sighted? Right out of our window. Is it touching the ground? Yes, it has not touched down now. Oh, gosh. I, it's just right there, right out our window. Right outside your window. God, yes. Well. Are you getting any words of wisdom? You just hang right in there, honey. This storm is severe, a massive storm. The track indicated by the hook in our radar screen is now moving into the city of Xenia. Persons in the city of Xenia and along the track just south of it, Arrowhead, Xenia, Central State, should take cover immediately. Not many in Xenia hear his warning. One who doesn't is the engineer on a fast freight just pulling into Xenia Junction, slowing down before it hits the downtown crossings. We got one now and it's going down. It's on the ground. On the ground where? Due east of Centerville Station in Greene County. The tornado hits Arrowhead Platte, a subdivision just south of Xenia, then goes ripping and roaring toward the heart of the city. Bruce Boyd, a young high school student, grabs his 8mm camera and films its coming. City Hall. Hello. Hey, Ronnie, I can see a tornado coming. Get the kids and get to the basement. We saw it too. We're on our way. Aboard the train, the engineer sees it coming too. Begins sounding a frantic warning. Xenia has just been hit by a tornado, and the place is torn to pieces. They're asking for fire equipment, police equipment, and ambulances. At Wright-Patterson Field. Uh, Keith, activate the disaster preparedness center. In minutes, an emergency medical convoy is assembling outside the base hospital, and a heavy construction battalion is also being dispatched to Xenia. Attention, Box 21. Attention, Box 21. Xenia's rescue squads are rallying, and in nearby Dayton, the crack volunteer rescue group known as Box 21 is also responding to the alarm. 1658, KKJ 558. In Xenia. Dick, I've got to get a hold of the hospital and find out whether they can handle any more patients. Can you contact them? Yes, sir, and will do. 35 uh, pounds for the entire fire. Both City Hall and County Courthouse are wrecked, and there is no emergency operating center equipped to deal with this kind of crisis. Bob Stewart and his staff find an undamaged office in the Greene County Jail and go to work by flashlight. And see if you can get with the Red Cross people about what kind of sources of water and food they're going to have. Okay, I'll get in touch with Civil Defense and the Red Cross. The biggest hang-up we've got, of course, is a railroad. Okay, we've got what? Main Street Block, Main Block, Market Block, Second Street Block. I'm Colonel Hartman from Wright Pat. Colonel, good to see you. I'm uh, here with a convoy of heavy equipment and about 120 men. Where do you want it? The biggest thing I want to get on right now is down on West Main Street, Bob. i got four railroad cars across the street down here. I'd like to get that opened up as soon as we can. you got the equipment, let's, let's we go. Try to show us where you want us to go. Okay. Nearly half of Xenia lies in ruins, but darkness hides the damage. Airmen from Wright-Patterson bring in an emergency generator, run lights into the county commissioner's office to serve as a makeshift operating center. All night long, Bob Stewart and his staff will be improvising desperately, trying to bring the situation under control. Boone, we have perimeter control established around the entire city now with 26 points. Is that right, Chief? That's right. Do you have any complaints of looting yet, Chief, or anything? I've had just a few, but they're minor so far. Great. And rescue workers are moving through the night, searching for injured and bodies. At nightfall, 
a new wave of tornadoes starts sweeping the south. In Alabama, they slice through Guin, Jasper, Lafayette, heading north toward Huntsville. Here's the latest bullet from the mill. A hook echo indicating tornado activity has now located over in northern Lawrence County. A tornado is on the ground at Langtown, or 26 miles west of the city of Huntsville, taking everything along as it goes. In Huntsville, Civil Defense Director Harris Mitchell already has the emergency operating center on alert. Give it to Philip Mav and plot it on, on the map. Mr. Wiseman, here we are. Put the warning out again. Persons in trailer courts and mobile homes elsewhere are urged to evacuate and get to a place of safety. If there's anyone in there, you better take cover. There's a tornado coming. A tornado is visible here at the airport. Projected path next few minutes will put it in the Harvest, Tony, Meridianville, Hazel Green areas of the county. We got a spot and headed our way. This thing is probably up above. a small crossroads community west of the city. This house is completely gone, and then there's three more brick houses here completely gone. I don't know if people are home or not. I can't find anybody out here. The, the searchers find three victims, a mother and her two small children. Their bodies blown and tumbled a quarter mile through the muddy fields. A grieving father, still alive, but with a broken back. Got a big fall spot at north, and off a big one. I can hear it now. A second twister has cut through the harvest area, right on the heels of the first. And the injured begin pouring into Huntsville Hospital. Agnew Ambulance Service has just asked other ambulances and surrounding communities to come and give assistance. All available ambulances in Huntsville are now dispatched to the tornado scenes. They need your help. Soon, blood supplies begin to run low. And we're running out of O positive and O negative. All right, how many O negative do you need? Huntsville Hospital is running dangerously low on their supply of blood. The Red Cross is opening their blood center. They ask that blood donors report to 701 Andrew Jackson Way immediately. We need some help up here. We've had four different tornadoes to hit us, and there's another one on the way. Can you send us up some blood by highway patrol? At 10.50, an enormous new funnel. What's its course? Directly as. Well, let's get out of here. Man, I can see this tornado very plain. It's coming just about straight in toward the border right now. How fast is it moving? It's moving fast. First sighting of the uh, Gunner Drive at the Space Museum. Space Museum is the first sighting. Mr. Wiseman? keeps coming through the heart of town, directly toward Huntsville Hospital. And I heard a roaring noise, and, and I 
that's all what I thought to be smoke and stuff coming up over the hill, but it was a black cloud or wind, dirt and everything coming up over the hill. And my little grandson asked me what it was, and I told him I thought it sounded like a train, but I knew it wasn't. And it just hit, and that's it. Huntsville. The last big twister has ripped through Redstone Arsenal, leveled a trailer village. Louisville. Xenia. Miles of sheer destruction and stunned survivors still in shock. It was just a big roar. And I I don't know. It was just terrible. It sounded like a big train whistle and we were right underneath the front of it. I've, I've never seen anything like it and I don't want to again. You come and you see your home and two seconds later it's all gone. It's just a nightmare. Just a nightmare. The town is torn in a million pieces. I was in the Battle of St. Lo and the Battle of the Bulge in World War II, and I never saw anything like this. This just happened so sudden, it's worse. And we have found parts of the bodies here. We've found parts of all the bodies. So we've, we've got to go back and hunt for some more. A million pieces and problems to match. Bodies still being pulled from the wreckage. Gas mains burning. Water lines broken. The train wreck still blocking some of the rescue routes. To make matters worse, snow and cold. National Guardsmen patrolling the streets use burning oil drums to warm their hands. One explodes and two of the Guardsmen, sleeping in an unheated store, die as the building goes up in flames. This is what tornado winds can do. And this. This is Wilson. Could you tell us what you found when you got home? A mess. One big super colossal mess. Could you My describe justice. some of it for us? Some of the things? Well, chicken feathers and skillet. Chicken feathers in a bowl that was in a refrigerator with a lid on it. Where'd the chicken come from? From a, a chicken farm just below us down here. They had quite a number of chickens and we got quite a number of feathers. In less than 24 hours, they counted 147 tornadoes. And the damage is enormous. All in all, more than $600 million. Homes, businesses, stores. Thousands of unsafe buildings to be searched, shuttered, marked off limits and disaster for the people who owned them. You got a house for sale here? Sure, dollar and a half. Have everything you want. A house for sale, huh? Yeah, yeah. It stood up. We were in it when the tornado went through. So, if you want it, you can have it. <laughs> dollar and a half, plus that. <laughs> Some take it philosophically. Others can't. What can you do? We lost everything that we had. But most refuse to give up. Do you have any idea yet what you're going to do? No, sir, I don't. I don't know what you do yet. Try to get our things, a few things we can get, and store them somewhere and try to start again. But starting over won't be easy. Help will be needed. The president's declared 10 states to be major disaster areas, eligible for federal assistance in all its many forms. One-stop disaster centers are set up to handle home, farm, and small business loans, food stamps, shelter, trailers, and other temporary housing, a score of other programs. And help is coming from every direction. Red Cross, Salvation Army, all the military services, Corps of Engineers, the National Guard, to clean up and restore essential services. Rescue squads from hundreds of miles away. Volunteers of every kind. What a mess. What a mess. Well, it'll all work out, I guess. It's just too bad. There's an awful loss here. My, these people, I feel so sorry for them. But I want to say one thing. The neighbors and the people have been outstanding. Really outstanding. Well, I'll tell you, I've uh, restored my faith in mankind with everybody. 
There's always so much talk about people. They don't care about each other. No way. There's no way. These people over here bust their backs. Money, anything you want. If I took all the offers that people gave me, I'd be a millionaire. April 3rd, 1974. The day of the killer tornadoes. They killed 307 people in 11 states and eight more in Canada. In Brandenburg, with no sirens, no weather wire, 31 dead. In Xenia, 33. In Louisville, Cincinnati, Huntsville, the story was different. They had warning, planning, emergency operating centers. And Hamilton County around Cincinnati lost only four lives. Louisville, three. Huntsville, none at all. Was it just luck, coincidence? Well, quite possibly it was. But warning can save lives. And that was another day when civil defense paid off. And the people who lived through it will never forget. You, you look out and see that crowd and you think, oh, that's just not going to happen to me. That happens to other people. And surely it's not going to hit us. And it did. And I, I just hope to God next time somebody listens to the narrative.